Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to put notes anywhere. Put notes in a long text memo field on any form in your Microsoft Access database. It's easy to throw a notes field up for a form that's got data in it, right? Customer form, product form. That's just a long text field. Drop a little box on the form. You're good to go. But what about places where you've got a form that isn't based on a table, like your main menu? Okay. Any other form in your database where you want to just keep notes. I like to keep notes all over the place. So in this video, I'll show you how to do that. Before we get started today, this one's for the more advanced users. So you'll need to know a little bit of VBA, not a lot, just a little bit. You should also know how the D lookup function works. You should know a little bit of SQL, what it is at least. I'm going to show you the only command you need. And you should know what the after update event is. Now I got free videos explaining how to use all of these things. So if any of this stuff is unfamiliar, go watch all four of these videos. All right. In that order too. Well, the last two don't matter. Okay, but go watch those first, then come back here, and I'll show you how to do the notes thing. Okay, so here I am in the Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website if you want to. Now, if you're in a customer record, like here I am, Richard Ross or James Kirk, whatever, you could easily put a notes field in here, right? We know how to do that. Watch my intro to Access 101 class, and you'll figure out how to do this one, right? But this is bound to a table. Okay, so this information here gets saved in this customer table. All right, in a notes field. Where's the notes field? It's over here somewhere. Uh, yeah, there it is right there. Okay, so that's easy. Now, what if you want to just drop a note somewhere, like on the main menu? I like to have little notes just scattered throughout my database. Okay, depending on what the database is. Right, especially if you're sharing this database with other people. You can put a note right here on the main menu that says, you know, I, I, last date we shipped out orders was this. You know, last date we printed invoices and mailed them out was that. Stuff you don't want to formalize anywhere else in the database in a record, you can just drop a note right here. Okay, or on your order form. You know, 86, the photon torpedoes, for example, were out or something like that. Whatever. I've got one, for example, um, I do a little stock trading, not a lot, but a little. I have one just on my stock portfolio database. It's just a little note field that says the last date that I checked for dividends is whatever. Okay. I don't want to make an actual, you know, entry in that in a dividend table. So just drop it as a note. So how do we do that? Well, first thing is we are going to need a table to store all of our notes in. All right. So let's make that first. All right. Create and then table design. And we don't need the property sheet to be that big. Okay, so this will be our note table. So note ID, that'll be our auto number. Okay, and then note text, and that'll be long text. Okay, that's it. That's all we need. Save it. Note T. Okay, there we go. Now, let's, well, well let's leave it blank. We'll, we'll leave this blank. So we got note ID and note text. Normally, I put some sample data in there, but we don't need to. All right, now, design view. I'm going to drop a notes box right here. Now, I already have a nice note box on my customer form. So let's just borrow this guy. Design view. Click on that. Copy it. Come over here. Paste it in. Okay. Right there. Now, we don't want to bind this to a notes field. Okay. So go to your data tab over here and take the control source out of there. It's now unbound. That means this side's not getting its data from a table. This form doesn't get its data from a table. Right? There's no record source. So how are we going to get some data in here? Okay, well, in the onload event for this form, we can go out to the note table, delook up any information, and drop it into that box. Okay, so, well, let's put a note in here first. It's kind of silly to do it without a note in there. So let's put a note in here. So let's put some notes. Let's, look at, let's put uh, notes for main menu. Okay, and notice that this is note ID 1. So we'll use that note ID 1. Okay, all right, every note box will have its own ID. Okay, so let's go to the properties here. Go to events, the on load event or on open, doesn't matter. Dot, dot, dot. That brings up our code builder. There it is right there. Let me resize this real quick. Get up there. Okay. Now, in the form load event, what are we going to do? We're going to say notes, that's my text box, equals, we're going to look up. So D look up. What are we looking up? The note text from the note table where the note ID equals one. 
just like that. Oh, one more function too. Just in case that is empty, we're going to wrap that inside of nz, null to zero. And we're going to change that into an empty string. If you've never used nz before, that's a cool little function. It says if this guy returns a null value, I don't want an error message because it'll usually error out. Instead, just convert that with nz into whatever value is over here. In this case, an empty string. Yeah, okay, fine. I should have put it on this screen. I didn't. I forgot. All right, my bad. Go watch that if you need to. <laughs> okay, so let's go back over here now. Save it. Close it. Open it back up again. Main menu. I got it right up here. Boom. There it is. Notes from main menu. Oh, look at that. Right? This form loaded. It went out to the table. Found whatever, what it was, found whatever was in there. Too much coffee today, folks. Right? And then pff, dropped it right there. Now, how do we save that back to the table when the user makes a change? Right? If I come in here and type some stuff in and then press tab, okay, or leave that somehow or close the form, I want this to save it. So we're going to use the after update event. All right, right click, design view. This is a little more complicated, but not too bad. Go to event, after update, dot, dot, dot. Okay, this is what happens after that field is updated. Okay, we're going to execute an SQL statement. We're going to say current db dot execute. You can use do command dot run SQL, but I like this better. All right, what does it look, what does it look like? Update, note t, that's the table, set, note, text, equal to now we got to put some stuff inside of quotes so normally you would put it like this inside of quotes right a b c d like that but we have to use double double quotes oh there's another video for you to watch if you don't know how double double quotes work all right there's another one i'll put links to all these down below you can click on them by the way yeah i probably should have went through this whole thing beforehand but i didn't it's just a quick video all right so <laughs> double double quotes okay so this actually has to be double double quote another double quote and then concatenate on whatever's in that field which is notes and open up the next string double quotes all right and then we need our where condition where note id equals one that says update the note table set the note text equal to whatever's in the notes box inside of quotes where note id equals one okay that's all and if you want to use my little status function you could say note updated. That just puts the words note updated in that little gray status box right there. Right there. If you watch my blank video, you'll, you'll know what that is. All right, so save this, close it, come back in here. Notes for main menu, yo. All right, hit tab. And as soon as you do that, it's updated, see? Now, if I close this and come back into it, look at that. It's saved right there. Isn't that cool? Now, if you don't want to have to rely on having this one inside of your code, you can actually use the tag property. Watch this. Design view. This guy here. Every, almost every control, if you go to the other tab here, has a property called tag. And you can just use that for storing whatever extra kind of information you want. I'm going to put a one in that box. So now I can refer to notes.tag. It's the tag property. All right, so watch this. Now I can come in here, change this to notes.tag. See that? And then down here, do the same thing, notes.tag. Now I can easily copy and paste that code without having to worry about changing the ID every time. As long as you name the box the same, you got to put the form load event and the after update event. Watch. Save it. Close it. Come back in here. Okay, and then we'll say notes with tag. Close it, open it back up again. Look at that, isn't that cute? Isn't that cool? Did you learn something new? Let's drop another one. Let's put something on the customer list. Maybe a note down here, right? Saying something about, uh, you know, make sure uh, for the month of February, double credit limits or whatever, whatever kind of notes you want to have, right? Okay, so let's go to the note table first. We'll drop it in here just to make sure we get the right ID, right? Because it's, it's, you might get a, a random ID sometimes, right? Uh, this will be notes for customer list form. So that's a two. Definitely two. All right. Now, come back to here. Design view. Copy this guy. All right. Right click. Design view. Come over here. Paste that in there. Change it up a little bit. Maybe make it like that. All right. Okay. Double click on this guy. Change his tag now to two. Okay. And then we need two bits of code. Let's take this code out of the other one first. Where is it over here? We need the form load and the notes after update. I'm going to take that and just drop it on my notepad. Where's my notepad? There's notepad. Rusty notepad. Boop. 
And we don't need the status stuff. And I'm not going to put the, the note updated in the next one, too. All right. Now, back over here, we need to put something in the form load event. All right. So event on load right there. Let's copy it from the other form load. Copy and paste. And look, notes.tag, I don't have to change the code. It's just going to read the tag out of that notes box. Okay. And then the other thing is the after update event. So this guy, event, after update, right there. And then we'll copy it from the notes pad and paste. Okay. All right. Save it. Close it. Shut her down. Shut this place down, John Taffer. All right. Here we go. Ready? This one here works. Okay. Let's open up the customer list. Oh, okay. More notes. All right. Close it. Come back in. Look at that. See? And now you can drop notes anywhere. Anywhere, any form in your database, you could drop notes. Just make sure that if you already have a field called notes, this guy here, all right, you can't name that one notes too. Then you'll have to change your code. But on any form, like, like usually I'll put this on menu forms, you know, put it on your main customer list form, right? Uh, remember, for the month of April, double credit limits or whatever you want to put in there. Okay, and now that's saved next time I come in. There you go. You'll see that. Okay, and, um, you know, Freddy gets no more uh, uh, photon torpedoes this month. He destroyed an asteroid. I don't know. Okay, and then you come back in the database next time, and there's your notes. And they're all saved nicely in your notes table. See? Sweet. If you like this lesson... There's lots more to learn. There's, I just scratched the surface. There's, so much, there's tons of stuff you could do with Access. Check out my developer lessons. I know this only goes up to 30 on here. I'm up to 36 right now. There's tons and tons and tons of advanced developer level, VBA, SQL, all that stuff on my website. Check it out, accesslearningzone.com. I'll see you next time. Hope you learned something. How do you become a member? Click on the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, 
If you like level one, level two is just one dollar. Yep, that's all. One dollar. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.